Indeed, I would add to that that the conspiracy charge here, Justice Kennedy, is co the problem with it is compounded by the fact that the tribunal itself uh, is charging a violation of the laws of war when the military commission has never operated to try violations of terrorism in stateless, uh, territorialist conflicts. That is, it's not just the charge, but it's where the charge operates that we find so central. That, uh, that the, there are two different things. Well, there's two different problems. Is it clear that the charges against your client could not be amended? Uh, they, 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 they may be amended. Yes. Th then why should we re why, why should there be review before trial of a charge that could could be amended? Be uh, there could be additional charges added by the time there's a final decision. And the, Justice Alito, the government has had essentially now four years to get their charges uh, together on Mr. Hamdan. At this point, uh, that you know what you have before you is the charge. And, the, and they've stuck with this charge of conspiracy, which is not a violation of the laws of war. Uh, and indeed, the tri and, and uh, the, it's not just conspiracy isn't, but that the commission is operating in totally uncharted waters because it's charging a violation uh, in a stateless, territorialist conflict, something as to which the full laws of war have never applied. Indeed, Justice Alito, all 10 people facing military commissions today, all 10 indictments, charge conspiracy right now. Seven only charge conspiracy. Isn't this contrary to the way legal proceedings and appeals are normally handled? You have a, a essentially a pretrial appeal concerning the validity of a charge that may not even be the final charge. Not, in, not here, because as, as uh, I think both courts below indicated, this case and his challenge falls very much like Abney versus United States. This is a challenge to the lawfulness of the underlying tribunal and the charge that's against him. Indeed, this court in Kieran heard as its first question, does the charge state a violation of the laws of war? That was the first thing it said had to be asked. So I think the set, what we are doing is applying nothing more than the settled practice that has always been the case with respect to military commissions. And it, in the public interest here, again, just as in Curran, I think requires some limits placed on military commissions, Justice Alito, because otherwise, if the government's position is, is taken as is the final word, it will give the President the ability to, blo to, to essentially create that blank check for years on end, render a final decision at some point, uh, and then that final decision will uh, then be subject to the truncated review procedures uh, in the DTA, which I don't think is what Congress intended when they changed the language of the bill. Rather, I think what they did was intend that this court would decide the basic apply the basic structural limits on military commissions that have always I applied. this question about the charge. The charge is not just conspiracy in the abstract. It's conspiracy to do specific things one of which is attacking civilians and civilian objects. And is it clear that the commission would not have, a military commission would not have jurisdiction to try a conspiracy to harm f uh, civilians in a war zone, for example? It is clear, Justice Stevens. That is, that is precisely what the international tribunals reject. Conspiracy is a standalone offense. One can charge as a war crime attacking civilians and the like as a pure crime, but what you can't do is charge conspiracy. And indeed, the Congress of the United States in 1997, when they wrote the War Crimes Act, essentially made that conclusion because they defined war crimes with incorporating a variety of treaties. Well, well suppose that proof were to show that uh, there was very substantial and in, in, in knowing involvement, rendering him uh, basically an, an, an accomplice or a principal, but it was, it was still found under conspiracy. Would international law violate that? If the Assume that he's been given notice of, uh, during, the, during the course of the proceedings as to what the charges specifically are as the proof is, is adduced. Justice Kennedy, on this particular point on conspiracy, uh, yes, if it, that you couldn't charge some other offense like aiding and abetting uh, and transmute some conspiracy charge into that. Rather, the international law and the laws of the United States recognize you can prosecute him for aiding and abetting, 
as a violation of whatever the specific underlying crime is, like uh, murder or attacking civilians. What you can't do is use the standalone offense of conspiracy, and here's why. Because the standalone offense of conspiracy is rejected by international law because it's too vague. And this court has said that the test for a violation of the laws of war is when universal agreement and practice make it a violation. The world rejects conspiracy because if it's adopted, uh, it allows so many individuals to get swept up within its net. Justice Kennedy, aiding and abetting requires a much closer relationship between the conduct uh, and the individual offender. Conspiracy does not. And so, for example, under the government's theory, a little old lady in Switzerland who uh, donates money to Al-Qaeda, and that turns out to be a front for, uh, for, for terrorist acts and so on, might be swept up within this broad definition of conspiracy. And that's why international law has so rejected the concept of conspiracy. Well, let me well, put it this be. way. If, if we were to find that the Geneva Convention um, or other settled principles of international law were controlling here, why couldn't we just remand to the D.C. Circuit and let it figure that out? Or let it have the tribunal figure it out in the first instance, assuming the tribunal is properly authorized? Well, it is the role of this court to confine the tribunal to its lawful jurisdiction. That's what this court held in Kieran. Um, and, and that's what we think you should do here. The tribunal itself can't be the judge of its own jurisdiction. Well, suppose we told the D.C. Circuit that the Geneva Convention or some other body of international law controls and just remand it for it to uh, go into all these arguments. Uh, again, we think at this point that the, the public interest is best served by this court saying that conspiracy doesn't violate, to set some limits. After all, all, everyone facing a military commission is facing this charge. Seven are only facing this charge. The government wants to put 75 of these cases through, and it has taken four and a half years since the president's military order yeah, for yes, this, this question, supposing the uh, charge had been slightly amended, instead of saying the criminal purpose and conspired and agreed with Osama bin Laden to commit the following offenses, so it had said it, it, it and Osama bin Laden attempted to, uh, aided and abetted in committing the following offenses. Would it then be uh, violate the laws of war? If the charge is the specific offenses themselves, not aiding and abetting Well, the specific the offenses are attacking civilians and attacking civilian objects. Yes, with respect to this particular claim about conspiracy, that would solve that problem. If you say the charge is attacking civilians and your theory of proving it is aiding and abetting the murder or the attacking of civilians. And then what yes. if the trial judge who looked at the indictment, luring on a uh, motion to dismiss the indictment or its equivalent at this time, said, well, I'm going to construe these words conspired and agreed as a substantial equivalent of aiding and abetting. But that's a, a, a let the charge stand? That, that, uh, that would mix apples and oranges because conspiracy and aiding and abetting are two entirely different things. One is a standalone offense and one is uh, a theory of how to prove but, but a violation. But the language is conspired it, and agreed with, and agreed with is pretty close to tried to do it himself. It's, it's not, Justice Stevens, because it requires a different level of participation and the liability is entirely different. Because if conspiracy is accepted, you're accepting Pinkerton liability. That's what the government's own charge said, the government's own instructions say, which means that Mr. Hamdan is liable for all the acts of 9-11 and everything Al-Qaeda has done. Aiding and abetting, as you are saying, Justice Stevens, in your hypothetical, is a much more closely tethered uh, theory of liability requiring a higher level of individual culpability and a totally different level of punishment. As I recall the Sixth Amendment, you're entitled to know the charge against you, and you're saying that uh, the charge of conspiracy is not the charge of aiding and abetting. That is correct. If I could uh, turn to uh, a second argument for why uh, we believe this military commission is impermissible, and that is that it defies the Uniform Code of Military Justice. 